Hello, I will do my introduction as usual. We are channeling extraterrestrials. We are speaking to extraterrestrials and higher beings. Uh, Jim is channeling, I am asking questions. I'm Mike Steiner. Uh, the extraterrestrials we speak to are uh, the alliance of Pleiadians, Yael Greys, uh, Arcturians and Neurons. And they have the fifth species. We joined them recently and I didn't say which species it is that. Um, Pleiadians are, actually we speak to Pleiadians which are part of the alliance which are tall, six feet tall, oh no, seven, how old, eight feet tall Pleiadians and they're different colors. They're blue skin colors like avatar people maybe and they're green skin, skin colors and uh, all other skin colors. They actually have the technology. Uh, they have that um, uh, ecological movement where they want to absorb sunlight so, so to conserve energy so they, they produce their own chlorophyll in the skin and they get the energy from the sun. So that's, that's why they have the fashion to be green. But it's, it's only the fashion. They can really change the colors. Uh, the yellow grays look like grays. They are tall grays, about five and six feet tall, and they're quite variable. They are our relatives, they are our descendants, and we are their descendants. There was an in exchange of genetic information back and forth. They are hybrid of us and other grays, maybe Zeta, Zeta and other grays, and, uh, and they are elected by other aliens to, uh, to do the first open contact. And unfortunately, this first open contact didn't happen yet. Uh, they delayed and delayed it. And the reason for delay is that they are not ready and we are not ready. Why, they are not, why aren't they ready? And you know, many other aliens know a lot about the Earth, but not the Yale Gray. Somehow they find it's really difficult to understand our reality. Why do we fight each other? Why do we have wars? Why do we lie to each other? Why do we have so much deception? Why do we have mind washing, brain washing, uh, mind control, uh, money? Why do we have money? Why can't we share the resources fairly and rationally? Why do we do so many rational things? Why don't we love each other? Why do we fight within families? Why do we? Why are we becoming angry? Uh, all of these questions, they have no clue actually. They look at our art, and what do we see in our art? We see killing people, like all of the, all the art. You know, if you look at the Renaissance, you see the Christ on the cross. So why do we have Jesus on the cross? I mean, you enter the church, and the first thing you see, you see suffering Jesus on the cross. Uh, you know, that confuses them tremendously. So our art is foreign to Yale, to Pleiadians, to, to, to the people who want to help us. They are relatives, they are committed to help us, but they have a lot of trouble understanding what's happening here. So, and, uh, and they, you know, the, 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 in practical terms, they don't understand who to speak to and they don't understand our politicians. Why our politicians change their mind? Why don't they want good for the humanity, why they do things which are hurting the humanity. So uh, they're completely confused and in this confusion they have trouble proceeding further. But they are still working on the, on the, on the contact and towards that uh, they created the colonies. We suggested to them take some of us up there and they took some of humans up there and created a human colony on their motherships and on their other planets in secure locations. So far in last six months about 200 humans visited, visited their colonies and only one was permitted to stay there for long term. All others are visiting under two weeks for about two weeks. You are going from down here, visit there for two weeks and come back in the same time you left maybe five minutes after you left. So. You are absent here only for five minutes. So, uh, those of you who are asking if uh, you know if you have to take time of your work or you can't leave because you have to take care of of your pets and children and family, it's not a problem. So applications are still invited for people to apply to visit the colonies. 
unfortunately the uh, the rate how fast do they take people is very slow they take so far out of about 250 people who apply they took only three so it's about one percent hopefully they will take many more but they didn't happen yet but so they took three people from the people who applied through the website humancolony.org and they took another about 200 people from elsewhere from their choosing and the reason is they trust their choosing they know that these people are are not going to make any problems and they're somehow suspicious that bad guys can infiltrate the website and go up there and make problems up there so I can't help them here that's up to them to decide how to take care of that I think the callings have to be stable and secure enough even to take our any humans and uh, and uh, to establish the contact between the humans and the aliens. What, what, what they do in the colonies is mostly they work on telepathy. You might be surprised, but that's the main thing for them. They can speak human language, but the human language is so limited. First, it is confusing. You, same word can mean different things. And also, you, we don't speak really what we think. We speak something which is conventionally used to. Uh, deliver some messages, but really what we think is not what we say. When you do, when you are telepathic, you are much more straightforward. Basically, it's really hard to, it's really hard to hide your emotions. It's really hard to hide uh, lies. You still hide a lot of things. The telepaths, experienced telepaths, have inner life, and what they say is not exactly what what inside. But at least you can see the deception and telepathy. You can see the intention and deception much better. Basically you link together. When you are telepathic you link together. So when you're linked you can't really deceive strongly. You can deceive a little bit but not strong. You can hide things but not deceive. And the thing, second thing about telepathy is it's like broadband compared to tiny modem of 2400 bits per second. So, so um, kilobits, 2400 kilobits. Um, so when they're telepathic they can understand a lot in in short period of time. So that's why they need telepathy. For them it was huge change from uh, where they were understanding humanity before the, the colony started half a year ago and after the telepathy, the first human de developed good telepath telepathic skills about three months ago, four months ago, the first human. Now they have nine telepaths in the colony and they're very happy to understand humanity much better. Now understand that we are not only angry and harming each other, that we actually love each other, that we trust each other. So love and trust are most important for them. And we actually can be cooperative, we can live in community, we can um, be responsible and fair to each other. For them it was a big discovery. Until then, they thought that we are hopeless. Actually, they were thinking that we are hopeless. They tried to help, but, but they were giving up. Now, when the colonies are started, and when they see that people are actually can be nice and can be cooperative, can be volunteer, can volunteer for the colonies, that radically changed their perception of the humanity as a whole. Now, that project humancolony.org also changed their perception. They see now that a lot of people come and volunteer to visit the aliens. Until then, they were abducting us. They were abducting humans, doing the hybridization program, making hybrids, uh, placing some of the hybrids back on Earth, and placing some of the hybrids elsewhere, and the Yell are the ones which were produced by abducting the humans by others. Zeta Grace produced them. Zetas abducted the humans, mixed with their own DNA, put on other planet, and the Yell evolved into a new species which is very successful and most of the aliens which we are speak to, speaking to are up there in uh, four dimensions four dimensions, we are third, they are fourth and, and the main transition from the third to fourth is telepathy the um, society links together telepathically and creates a new much more linked, much more unified entity which becomes four Fourth dimension. We also speak to third dimensional aliens. We spoke to Andromedans, third dimensional in solar system. They're also good helping to us. And we spoke to a friendly reptilian race. 
uh, they also third dimensional. But they, the Andromeda and Reptilians, they inherited their technology from other civilizations. So they are capable to come here, and we are not capable of exiting our solar system. And we are having, having trouble traveling the solar system, especially because you know this is done mostly for military purposes, and they don't allow weapons in the space. We are not allowed on the moon because of military intentions of our mm. military people. All right, what else should I say? Um, Reiki, this Reiki. So we started doing it during the Reiki session. Reiki is a healing art. It is a healing energy art. You lay hands on a person and send loving healing energy to a person and that energy heals. This Reiki energy is not physical, it's, you can say it's spiritual, you can say it is astral, you can say it is uh, subspace energy. Uh, I can sense, can I say it now? Mm, now my Reiki energy is not very strong. I can sense a little bit of, I'm sending the energy from my fingers to another hand, I can sense a little bit of it. And it feels like like I'm blowing really soft in my hand. I feel a little bit of sensation of that. And I know it's not physical, I, I can tell about that later. Um, so Reiki, energy, uh, Reiki healing typical session is one person lay, lay the healers lays the hands on another and sends the, uh, the Reiki energy, which is the same thing as Chi energy and Prana energy, uh, to through the hands to the person to heal. Uh, Jesus and other people in the Bible uh, laid hands on other people and, and healed them. They used hands to heal. And our hands are designed to heal. They are connected to our mind and they send, they send an energy through the middle of the palm and through the fingers. Uh, a student of Jesus channeled by others, shared the, his, her techniques, uh, they put the hands like that on the person, on the back, on the hump. And they invited the energy to enter their heart, and then from their heart through the hands to enter wherever is needed in the person. And that's how they send the healing. Uh, in Reiki, normally you put the hands on the head, on the heart, on the throat chakra. Uh, Reiki healing technique, uh, healing theory is about chakras. We have vortices of energy which build, which connects the human body to different dimensions. The lower vortex, uh, lower chakras like uh, sexual chakra and root chakra are connecting us to lower levels of, uh, of the creation and higher chakras connect us to higher levels of creation. So we are connected by design, we are connected both to lower vibrations of physical world and beyond that and to high vibrations of spiritual world, our, our, I think this chakra, the throat chakra connects us to our, to our, uh, to the seventh dimension of our spirits, at that's my understanding. Heart connects us to the fourth dimension and solar plexus connects us to the humanity of the third dimension. So we are transitioning as a whole, as a humanity, we're transitioning from, from that chakra, from third dimension to a fourth dimension, to the heart, where we connect to each other in a loving way. <coughs> and that's a major transformation which is happening to us right now. And our friends, alien friends, say that it will take about 200 years and about six to eight generations to make this transition. So our ascension is slow. And they say it's very different. The ascension is very different from rapture. So rapture in the Bible is where dead comes from, not only Bible, even in Egyptian mythology, the dead were, were to be revived and come from the ground and to join the living people and the, there will be heaven and earth. So that's rapture. And ascension is basically a completely different thing. It is the evolutionary step of the species when we are all becoming telepathically connected and we all uh, become united and our vibration changes because of that unification. We vibrate now one way, so when we connect we vibrate very fastly, very quickly and that's a different vibration level. The whole, the whole earth will, will ascend to the four dimensions. Slowly we have now 
piano part where it's not a jump, it's kind of a quick but continuous evol evolution. So some of us do it, do it faster, we already have some humans who are four dimensional already on earth and we have some humans, most of us are third dimensional and we are all levels in between. Spiritual frequency is something which was introduced by our friends and it's measured between low, maybe three, uh, to very high. So Jesus, when he was in the body, it's a measure of the body frequency. So how much spirit fits in the body? So Jesus, when he was on earth, he was about 12. But you know, it's how much of the spirit can fit, and about the same one, I think, for, for Buddha. Uh, can fit in the body. Uh, we are ranging normally between three and five. Our alien friends range in between 12 and 15. Why Jesus was lower than our alien friends? Very simply because he has to be, had to be between the humans who are very low vibration to connect to them, to connect to earth. You have to intentionally go down in vibration. You have to really lower yourself. Have to adopt. So, for our aliens to speak to us, our alien friends to speak to us, they have to go from their 15 to our 4 and basically speak on the topics which are interesting to us, think of the way in which they connect, can connect to us. So, it, for them, it's difficult, but they volunteer for that. It's also very, for them, it is an experience, and for us, it is an experience. What else do we need to say? Uh, yes, why can't we? Why is the contact also dangerous for the humans? Basically, our system is very unstable. The whole global economy is very unstable. They predict, not only they, our human people, leaders who understand, they predict that even the slightest variation is dangerous. The contact, the open contact between the aliens and us is not the slightest thing. It's a big transformational event for the humanity. The humans will have to awaken to the fact that we are not in the, uh, in the galaxy. And we'll have to wake up to the fact that the aliens are visiting of us for the whole history of the humanity. And especially to the fact that hybridization program is true and was very active in the last 50 years. And Awaken to the fact that we have hybrids walking among us, to the fact that our leaders are talking to the aliens walking there in the highest ranks among military and highest offices of our major corporations. They are being present there, not in large numbers, but the top leaders are in contact with them. Uh, so, the first thing the people will ask is why we are paying taxes, because our taxes are used to a large extent to make new weapons, and why do we need new weapons if the aliens are here and they have much stronger weapons? If they wanted to destroy it, they would, they would have done it before. In fact, we know really well that they prevent the, the big destruction, they prevent the atomic war, and, and they do it for over 50 years. They intentionally and openly demonstrate to our leaders that when the situation is critical, they show up and destroy our weapons. Our meaning, their, the military weapons. I'm not associating myself with them. So uh, the aliens are keeping the peace. And they're keeping the peace, and they, they are committed to keeping the peace on Earth. The global third world war will not happen. They will prevent that. They have the means to stop the major attacks. They don't stop minor attacks because how far can you go? They have to, you know, let us evolve. They have to, they choose to let us learn on our mistakes. So minor terrorist acts, even Hiroshima, they allowed to because it was a big lesson for humanity. So and they have to understand that they they allow minor things, minor compared to complete destruction of Earth. Okay, so they delay in that, and last time I spoke to them about, last time they shared with us about the plans for open contact, it was about half a year ago, they said they were planning it for the end of this year, 2014. Uh, again, 
they have been delaying and they had that deadline and they moved it and moved it and moved it forward. So I wouldn't be surprised that even at the end of this year nothing will happen. And the reason is they don't want to be responsible for crushing of our economy. I didn't continue that logic. So the humans will say why do we pay taxes if our military don't have to produce the, the weapons then the whole economy which is built on fuel trade of fuel and trade of weapons will fall apart because the main uh, goods which are sold between the countries uh, will not be popular anymore the aliens can provide the free energy if they want. the technology is already here they already provided it so so the, op the open contact will cause the technology to surface a lot of things will surface because a lot of things are hidden and they have been already published or already books on the free energy, books on, uh, on disclosure, but the public is not awakened, has not awakened to that. So the open contact will, will, will cause awakening and that awakening is destined to destroy, uh, to shake our economy substantially. So they delay. I think they will delay it as long as they can until they really have to, they are forced to do that open contact. So they, they will be, uh, the, if there is a danger, an imminent danger, so the open contact is absolutely necessary to prevent that imminent danger, then they will, I predict they will go forward. So when they are forced to go forward and do the open contact, that, then it will happen. Or if they are invited. But until then they are still preparing on their side, they are making movies very good so they uh, the colonists are making interviews the humans in the colonies are interviewing the aliens and collecting this huge number of hours of interviews and they will they are ready to broadcast these interviews on earth just to sell those to our tv networks when they are ready to take those so the, for the when they start opening contact there will be a big flux of information on earth to to educate ourselves about the the aliens. So there will be interviews, there will be announcements and things of that sort. And after that there will be next steps which apparently are inviting our leaders, hopefully, to, or and celebrities to go up there, visit, meet them up there, creating here some sort of um, diplomatic representation places, how do you call those, like little campuses, like uh, diplomatic missions, embassies, yes, embassies consulates of different uh, alien races. So that will be the next step. And then slowly we, uh, we'll do certain reforms and we will be integrated in the galactic society and taken as a member. Now, we speak to uh, ancient God, which is a global, not global, sorry, digital global, which is a consciousness, it's collective consciousness. So. So collective, collective consciousness called L, E L. Elohim, Michael, Samuel, many other words are uh, involved at word. So L in ancient languages means God. So this uh, collective consciousness L is a part of God. They, initially they were human large humanoid giants. They were physical beings, but then they evolved into spiritual beings, and then they evolved into collective consciousnesses, connective consciousness, and they are not physical anymore. And they provide services to the whole galaxy. About 99% of the galaxy are using L services to replace money. L is the synonym for money in the galaxy. Not on Earth, but in the galaxy. So they are responsible to make it fair, to make the distribution of goods fair between the individuals and the races and even between the beings and the nature. So they are the ones that control the, the fair and rational distribution of wealth. Uh, El came to speak to us and also was referred by our alien friends who confirmed that he, that he is a real thing or it is a real thing. They are a real thing. And uh, they confirmed that they have a plan to crash our economy in 13 years from now, in 2027. And as a result of that, it is predicted that half of the humanity will perish. This is a very sad news that this seems to be imminent. Uh, we believe that it's true. 
and it is confirmed by all the contacts who we ask about that that this is the plan by the gods to do that rational transformation of our economy and money system. After that, the money will be gone, but will be gone. The money will be gone, but the banks and corporations and even governments will stay in place, but largely transformed. The how the how the people will be dying. The people will be dying from local violence. No, will be no. There will be no global war, which will be prevented by the aliens. They will. Uh, basically stop the big nuclear war, but local violence in big cities is what might is predicted to kill half of the humanity. Four billion of humanity in 13 years will be killed by local violence in big cities. That's the prediction. And famine. Say again? And famine. Famine. Jim adds and famine. So here's <coughs> another big problem. So famine in big cities. Which is very likely, you know, if, if the economy crashes, that's what normally would happen, right? I lived through a crisis in Moscow in 1991-1993, where the government was shaken. It didn't fall apart. We had electricity turned off, but it came back on. So, so it, there were shootings on the streets, but it wasn't complete, complete uh, breakdown. It wasn't complete meltdown of the economy. The economy somehow <coughs> sustained in Moscow. Some other cities went through more radical damage. Uh, they had, you know, the, the hot water wasn't there, even cold water wasn't there, electricity wasn't there for a long time, so they barely had electricity. So it's, it's, a, it's a part of our reality. Now our goal is to prevent that. That's my take on this. We should reduce the, the casualties, reduce the damage in that. We should prepare for that, we should reform, transform, be more prepared for that event. And that requires awakening of everybody, that's why we are speaking here. Alright, I think uh, I'm done with an introduction. Uh, now I will lay down and Jim will put my, uh, his hands on my, uh, mostly I need treatment in my mouth, so he will do Reiki. And, uh, uh, then we'll exchange places, I will be doing the Reiki on, on gym. And that kind of creates an, an additional connection, additional antenna. So I go also, not only gym goes into trance, I go in some sort of a trance as well. Not complete trance, but I'm in a different state. So Reiki helps us to, to do that channeling, which is a bit unusual, but uh, we can do it uh, without Reiki, but I also need healing, so I'm using alien energies to get the healing. I didn't feel well last week, but now I'm... I'm in better shape. I have questions. So uh, when Lakesh, our so Lakesh is our friend who is a blue Pleiadian, but the small one. So there are big blue Pleiadians, the small blue Pleiadians, and small blue Pleiadians they don't tell the planet or the star where they come from. But uh, uh, we are in contact with Lakesh. He is very helpful. So he is a tiny, not tiny. He is kind of round low, like four feet tall, blue player, as he describes himself. And he is very helpful answering questions. Um, so I have lots of questions from you. Join our site, submit your questions, and hopefully Lakesh will be answered. And we are really welcoming, thank you everybody for, for joining the website, for your activity, and for asking questions, discussing things, providing. We get a lot of nice offers of offering the help, so we are accepting help on the website for administration, moderation of the site, discussion of things, new information comes our ways, I spoke to a few people through Skype, so all of that is a very exciting activity, I am welcoming that, it is great. And Jim does his personal sessions, now he is bo fully booked, which is great. And so contact me and I will get you in connection with Jim and he will set up a personal channel session so you can uh, do a channel session through the phone or through the Skype and he charges $40 for half an hour of channeling and when he is not channeling it's not counted so only channeling time and it can be prorated. Mm. I will do the, the final conclusion speech later. Uh, now I will pause and I will continue with, with the channeling session.